Hello my lovelies, welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My voice is almost completely back, yay. Reminder, I did retouch my lip fillers, I think it was like two days ago, so I do have, and you can tell right where they went in, a little bruising, do not be alarmed. Anywho, as you could tell, of course, from the title of the video, we're gonna try on some new makeup. The new, new items are the new Makeup Forever foundation. I got a sample of the new powder they just came out with and also the new Glossier Cloud Paint bronzer. Super stoked. I will probably include the new Spring 2024 Chanel blush in this video for eyes. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's what we're doing. We're gonna try out some new makeup. So if you are interested in my thoughts on any of these new products, then just go ahead and keep on watching. All right, my lovelies, hair is pulled back. And I have nothing on my face other than my skincare because I do have this little Glossier. What is this? Priming Moisturizer, Buildable Hydrating Cream. So I'm going to jump into this before I go in with my actual primers. I got it as a sample in one of my orders. So let's see what this is about. And if I enjoy it, I think this is new. I feel like Sephora usually does mini samples of new items. Oh, very moisturizing. Just to kind of give you a little tasty, tasty of a new product. And if you really enjoy it, then you go and buy a full size. But this actually feels amazing. Really, really good. I've never tried any skincare items from Glossier, but I do enjoy what I own from the brand. Okay, hi, editing Mary here. I don't know what happened to one of my clips uh, where I describe, well, I tell you about the product, description, how much it costs, shelf life, all the good stuff that you all want to know. So I'll pop up the picture of the product and the description. It was made in France and has a six month shelf life. So, okay, back to the video. Okay, we're not going to do a side-by-side. -side. I love this foundation. My skin literally looks flawless all day with this. So I know I love this. I don't need to compare it to this formula. I just need to know if I enjoy this or not or if it's too glowy for me. By the way, anytime I do, actually, I always put all of my skin information down below, my age, my preference, what kind of skin type I have, all that good stuff that you need to know and rely on when it comes to base product reviews. So let's pump some foundation out. Um, I kind of like the contrasting white with the bottle. Hopefully it's not too dark, but I feel like the other one, ooh, it's runny. Okay, I think the other one's a tiny bit runny too. What I do remember from the other HD foundation is that it does dry down fairly quickly so you have to work a tiny bit quick to blend it out we'll see if that's the case with this one as well I did wash my makeup forever foundation brush it's one of my favorites oh sorry for covering you this mirror makes my camera go a little crazy I feel like the color is okay. Maybe just the tiniest bit dark. But I feel maybe because of the skincare ingredients, it might oxidize just a tiny bit. Okay, so this side has the foundation and this side does not. I definitely feel like it has a light shiny glow to it but not too much i think the color is good i do have an old blemish right here and it's actually not clinging that like, almost at all onto the dry patches around it i feel like my skin looks very pretty gosh what is this reminding me of it's reminding me of a product that i love but so far, first impressions. I don't know about medium coverage, 
Right now, and I want to say I probably used maybe half a pump on this side, maybe less. Light medium is what I'm seeing, but you tell me. Okay, let me do this other side. Okay, I did want to show you what the full completed blended face looks like and I feel like it looks like I don't really have anything on My face does look a tiny bit darker than my neck, but it matches my shoulders pretty well I'm loving the way that this is laying down on my skin mm, It doesn't dry down completely Because it doesn't feel powdery but it dries down enough. Okay, I'm gonna jump into this Makeup Forever Ultra HD. I don't think this is available anymore, at least not at Sephora. I haven't checked the Makeup Forever site. I do enjoy the newer one that they released, I think also last year, I don't remember, but it's a good one. Both of them are good. I enjoy this one as much as I enjoy that one. Gonna jump in into my Vive 119 Conceal and Prime brush. Okay, now for the next new item, which is from Glossier, the Cloud Paint Gel Cream Bronzer. And it looks like it comes in five different shades. It retails for $22. And I purchased the shade Dune, which is described as a golden tan. It's the second lightest shade. This is, I'm on the Sephora website. I purchased all of these from the Sephora website. An easy to use buildable gel cream bronzer that gives skin a natural wash of warmth dimension or sculpted color light coverage natural it's a cream some of the highlighted ingredients soluble collagen that retains water and leaves the cheeks looking fresh and dewy okay so i will definitely have to set this i'm trying to think i don't think i have to set the cloud paint blush i guess we'll see when i try it out a uh, smooth gel system it's a lightweight gel cream texture for silky even application blurring powder pigments it gives a soft diffuse seamless finish with no streaks and if you're familiar with the glossier cloud paint blushes it looks just like a tube of say if you were to go to the craft store and buy some acrylic paint most of the tubes look like this just have a little we're at high elevation so these always spew out it's spewing out you see that so I'm probably gonna waste some product anytime I open my glossier cloud paint blush it's the same thing because we're at high elevation it's just it keeps going <laughs> oh my goodness I do enjoy this packaging, but I also feel like it has its cons. It could be messy. Yeah, so I did want to talk real quick about this other bronzer that they came out with. This is the Solar Paint Luminous Bronzer Cream. And this packaging I prefer because it's like a little doe foot applicator. Now, these do not have the best review. <sighs> A lot of bad reviews. Best way I found to be able to make these work for my skin is apply it to the back of my hand, pick it up with the brush from the back of my hand, and then apply it that way, which is a similar way of why you of how you would apply these cloud paints. Okay, so like I said, Dune is the shade I picked up. Hopefully it's a good one. And Flare, I think this is the lightest shade for those. Okay, definitely feels like a jelly. Gosh, it's been a minute since I've picked up the Cloud Paint blush. I might need to see if the texture is a tiny bit different than this because I feel like the blush is a little bit more true to an actual paint. Like they stain like crazy. At least the shade I have, which is like an orangey shade. Nicola Rose and BK Beauty in 1.5. Okay, so I would definitely say this is a natural sheer kind of formulation. 
Okay, formula is completely different from this one here, but I'm gonna swatch a tiny bit of it and see if it feels jelly. Because the texture of the cloud paint is reminding me a lot of that iconic London um, gel bronzer that they came out with. Yeah, and this one feels maybe a tiny bit more on the watery side, not gel-like. And this one really dries down. This new one, this cloud paint, does not feel like it dries down too, too much. I think the shade I picked up is good. It is, like I said, a light, sheer kind of formula. So I think if you wanna go a tiny bit darker, you probably could. But I think you can build it up. At least I feel like it's building up. I would say it's definitely a natural kind of finish. But that's very pretty. If you are somebody who enjoys minimalistic, natural beauty kind of products, I think you'll enjoy this. Okay, so I have the bronzer here. No bronzer here. Okay, I enjoy that. I still have some product left. I'm gonna pick it up with my brush and hopefully I don't regret it. <laughs> and it does kind of dry down, but see how this one, it's like, it's there, it's not moving. See? And this one, I picked it up with the brush and it's almost completely picked up. So I feel like they might have changed this formulation for the bronzers and it's not like an exact replica as far as formula as the blushes. Because I don't feel like the blushes are sheer like this. I might have to pick it up and use it. But I do like it. I might have to pick up a tiny bit more. Okay, so I took out my blush real quick, just so I could feel the formula. Yeah, the formula is different. This does not feel like a gel, it feels like a cream. And see how like it just, I'm blending it and it does dry down. It dries down, is this dry? It's not completely dewy, but it doesn't dry down the way that the blushes do. So I feel like they changed the formulation. So different. So I blended that out. Now I'm going to see if I can remove it. Let me grab a blush brush and see if I can pick it up completely. Maybe, I mean, it makes sense because you definitely don't want this kind of formula for your bronzer. I don't know. I don't know. But the formula for the bronzer is not the same as the blush. I don't feel like it is. Okay, the last new new, because I have used the Chanel blush, but I will demo that for you. Uh, so the last new product is this new powder from Makeup Forever. I got a little sample. You already know how I love my samples. Um, I did already go into powder for my under eyes and I went into the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse. What shade is this? I don't even know. Might be translucent? Yeah. For my under eyes, I totally forgot to get a sample of this. I've only used it a couple of times, so I'm like, okay, you need to use that because you need to get your final thoughts on it. But so far, I am enjoying it. So far, I am enjoying it. Okay, so now this new powder here, the Makeup Forever HD Skin Shine Controlling and Blurring Setting Powder comes in six different shades, and it retails for $43. Wowza. I got a sample of the 0 0.4, which is called Corrective Banana. So it's the second lightest shade, it looks like. I would say that's about the shade that I would get. Um, I don't like using, especially when they say translucent and it has pigment to the powder, I always go one or two shades down because I feel like if I go with the shade that they suggest, it's usually a tiny bit too dark and it does make my foundation look a tiny bit darker after I set it. So I feel like this is the shade I would actually get in a full size. But since I can try it out in a mini, that's what I'm doing because 
I love my minis. <laughs> so a super fine setting powder that diminishes excess shine for a soft matte finish that lasts 24 hours without caking or enhancing texture, even on drier skin types. So medium coverage, uh, I don't know about that, and a matte finish. When this came out, kind of reminded me of this. It's the um, Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder. And for this one, I have the shade 2.0 Banana. So here's the little sample. And then this is the, I love this by the way. I think they came out with this maybe almost three years ago. Such a good powder. Not a lot of people talked about this and it honestly mattifies your skin so well and it keeps it intact and looking amazing the whole day. Now, I don't know about oily skin because I don't have oily skin, but this powder was fabulous and not enough people talked about it. I feel like the shades are pretty similar to each other, so I don't think we'll have a problem. This is the new one. So we're gonna use this to set the full face. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it, and I also have the feeling that this new formulation is replacing this older formulation. Maybe they changed an ingredient. Maybe they are making it more clean. What is the month shelf life on this? It has a 12 month shelf life and it was made in Italia. Okay, let me, it has like a little sticker. Let me get that off. A few moments later. Okay, sorry. I got off camera because sometimes I could really make a mess. So it did have a little sticker to make sure. Poured some out on the cap. And I'm gonna use this Soneji Inoki brush. I dipped in here, but I am tapping the brush. Since it's a smaller one, I think I'm gonna tap it on the back of my hand too because this lid is pretty tiny. Okay, I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this. Makeup Forever powders, they, they know what they're doing. I feel like when it comes, well, everything I've tried from Makeup Forever, I've enjoyed. I have not purchased that new bronzer they came out with even though I almost did, but I'm like trying to stay strong and just being a tiny bit more picky about my purchases. This was a free sample, so I didn't technically purchase it, but if I can review it for you all, in case you were interested, you know, that's great. But yeah, so far, this is looking amazing. My base is looking so good right now. Okay, faces nice and powders. I already have some powder bronzer. I went in to the MAC matte bronzer. And as you can see, I have blush on half of a cheek because I did film for a Instagram reel. Uh, but just wanted to show you what my skin looks like 100%. It works very similarly to this. I would have to deep dive and see if this... I feel like this is replacing this older formulation. More than likely, they switched some ingredients around to maybe call it more of a clean product. Um, but... They are, so far, first impressions, performing pretty much identical. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Now we're gonna jump in to the Chanel blush from the Spring 2024 collection. I think I heard someone say that it was part of the Comet collection. I'm not a Chanel expert, but I wanted to use this again today, even though I already included this in like a dedicated review to a Chanel products. So this is the Powder Blush Duo in Rose Coquillage is the name of the shade. And just like it says, it's a duo. It has two different shades. It has a rosy mauve tone and one that's like a corally peachy tone. So I'm gonna apply the mauve tone to the back of my cheek and the other one to the front. I have two different Sonia G blush brushes. It's the soft cheek. And it actually does fit pretty good in here. It's a new product. I've only used it the one time for the review. So I figured I'll include it in this video too. I really am enjoying this formulation. It's more of a matte kind of formula, which none of the blushes that I own from Chanel are like a matte finish. They all have some sort of glow or sheen to them. So that is nice and exciting because then I don't feel like I wasted my money, you know? So pretty. Okay, so I'm picking up my other Sonia G and jumping into the corally shade. By the way, this blush retails for $75. That 
it's a lot of moolah it's super pretty and it does have that slight chanel scent it doesn't linger around as soon as you start applying it it goes away what do you see so pretty let me go ahead and finish off the rest of my face off of camera I don't think I'll be doing a dedicated wear test to this video because there's more than one new product, but I'll definitely leave a note while I'm doing my outro and talking about everything on how it performed and whatnot. Okay, I'm getting annoyed with myself because this is, I think, the fifth time I'm trying to do this. Okay, for the rest of my face. I think the only thing I did off camera was my eyes, eyebrows, and lips. So for the eyes, I have on the Skin by Kim Matte Eyeshadow Palette and the Make Beauty, um, the new Duo Curl multi Chrome Metallic Eyeshadows they came out with, like the single ones, in the shade Blaze. And then for eyelashes, I have on Max Stack, the YSL sample I have. Eyebrows, the Benefit Cosmetics Brow Pencil and the Domini Cosmetics Brow Gel. For my lips, I have on the Lip Cheat Lip Liner from Charlotte Tilbury in Hot Gossip and the lipstick, I think it's the Kissing Formulation in Stoned Rose. Love this combo, absolutely beautiful. And then for the highlighter, I have on the Rose Ink Cream Highlighter. I just wanted a tiny bit of glow and I think it looks so pretty. I love that highlighter, by the way. Okay, foundation. Let's talk about that first. My base looks so good. So pretty, like my skin but better, healthy, nice, natural kind of glow. But the finish, the finish is not dewy. The finish is like a satin kind of matte, but the glow peeks through even after powdering because you saw that I powdered. Yeah, this is laying down and looking absolutely stunning. I have a tiny bit of dry patches still because obviously I'm recovering kind of still from being sick. I mean, I feel good. Voice is coming back. I'm not really sick anymore, but like my body is physically still recovering from being sick and it's not clinging at all to any of those dry patches. Now, am I going to enjoy this more than this one? I think for right now, yes, because we're in drier months. I will need to test this out during summer and see how it does. So I feel like these two are like the perfect duel all year round. You use these in the warmer climate months and then you use this in the colder climate months and you'll still get the same beautiful base, pretty much. I don't know. That's just how I feel. I do hate the fact that this only has a six month shelf life. I get the whole skincare infused ingredients, blah, 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 crap. I know, I'm sorry to call it crap, but it's, I feel like it's messing up a tiny bit when it comes to longevity and how long your products last you. Six months is not a lot. If you're somebody who buys your next foundation because obviously you finished the one that you're using now and you need a replacement, okay, then it makes sense because I do feel like you would use this in six months. But if you're somebody who has more than one foundation, which I feel a good large amount of the population that is into makeup has more than one foundation in their collection, it's just, it doesn't make sense. So as far as performance wise, I think it's absolutely beautiful first impressions. It gets a huge thumbs up from me. Now I put my age, all the information that you need to know when it comes to base products down in the description box. Okay, now for the Glossier bronzer. I'm not going to lie, I was super excited when I saw this. This actually feels like a gel and the blush actually feels like a creamy paint. So the formula right off the bat, different. That could either be a pro or a con. The pro would be that it's easier to work with since it's a little bit more on the sheer side and it's a gel just it's easier to work with, easier to blend. You have a little bit more leeway when it comes to blending out. The con is that you're probably going to use this up a tiny bit faster than you would the blush because of the sheerness of the formulation. I don't feel like the pigmentation or the payoff is as good as the blush. Like I said, it's either pro or con, that depends on you. All right, and last but not least, this new powder. So I already gave kind of my thoughts 
about it and how it's probably a replacement for this older formula because I want to say a couple of months I did see this one on sale like 50% off so they might just be doing away with this one and then this is coming to replace it so far performance wise it performs almost identical to what I remember the older version of that performing oh and my Chanel blush I love this I do not regret one bit purchasing this such a beautiful formula and I also do love the fact that this formula is actually different than what I already own from Chanel I feel like from the big huge luxury brands Chanel is one that I've kind of been purchasing a tiny bit more from at least I feel like I have it will be put to good use okay that is all for this trying on you makeup video I hope you enjoyed it it was a good video. Everything looks pretty. I feel like my makeup looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. You have no idea. All the comments, all the likes. If you use my links to shop, it truly does mean the world to me. Okay. With that being said, Thank you so much for being here again. I appreciate you. Do not forget to give the video a big thumbs up. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you all on the next video. Bye.